Hello there, everyone. You've tuned in. UXW Bill here with you on the internationally unrenowned show known as How Not to Install Ductwork with UXW Bill, specializing in how to do HVAC repairs the completely incorrect way. Now, I'm just kidding, and I'm afraid that's probably going to turn into the dumb shtick that the whole smoke test thing has turned into. I really wish we could forget that and just move on with our lives. We're out here at the little old one-room country church that's the home of the Hammond organ you've seen in previous videos, or if you haven't, go back and watch those videos if they happen to pique your interest, or even if you think they might. The problem we're dealing with today is one of intermittent heat. I actually happened to notice this a couple weeks ago when the uh, church was having a hot dog roast, and I came down here, I heard the thermostat click, and being in tune with those sorts of things... I noticed that the furnace did not start, so I figured there was probably something wrong. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it to perform on video here. We'll just click up the thermostat a few degrees. I really don't think they ought to have it set that cold. Then we'll just wander around here. Okay, I hear our pre-purge. Let's see what we get. Let's see if it's going to perform on camera for us. As I remember it, this thing's got a pretty lengthy pre purge. Yeah, there's our igniter. It's not going to perform on camera for us. Must be camera shy or something. What it's been doing though is the typical symptom of a dirty flame rod. The flames will start for just a moment when the gas valve opens and the igniter's on and then because nothing is being sensed by the control board in the furnace it'll actually go ahead, shut down, retrial for ignition. 90% Goodman. One of two furnaces in the old building. This one's a straight heat setup. That one's got cooling capability. Oh, there's a little bit of cleanup we need to do in here. I'm not trying to cast aspersions on the cleaning staff by any stretch of the imagination, but nobody ever goes in here. And it looks like since I've been in here the other day, there were just mouse droppings up here, but now steal a page out of Ted Cook's book. There's little Jimmy. You're not doing too good. <laughs> so I actually went ahead and brought a vacuum cleaner. Got the old Kerbald Electrolux here with me today because although the church happens to own a vacuum cleaner, it's just an upright sanitaire with no provisions for a suction hose. Maybe I'll get to Key Keeper and get rid of old Jimmy up there for me. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'll bring my tools down and We'll start looking at the flame rod on this furnace and see if that's really the problem with it or if it's something else. I sure am glad I got a fur head to help me out here. Edward Knife Hands. <laughs> Put up. I can't off this blade no more. I just take it out and you can go up that staircase over there. Oh man. I had a bat get in the house a couple years ago and I'll tell you what, fur head man, he's, he's just fearless. He put his welding gloves on and he just went and got it. Alright. Let's see here. Probably need a little more hose than what we got. I got a solution for this. Nothing to it. Just lay her on her back there. Oh, we got enough hose to work with. Oh, it smells terrible in here. Oh, yeah. You can sure smell that stench. Oh, get down here. There we go. Not perfect, but it's a million times better than what it was. 
waiting for the heat exchanger to cool down. Okay, so the indoor blower shut off, but that heat exchanger and certainly that burner assembly might still be fairly warm. So let's see if they actually wired this thermostat for more than just heat. It does not appear that they did. Okay, so I just happened to show what was going on to Furhead and the Keykeeper, who are both here helping me out today. And the furnace did exactly what it wasn't supposed to do. That is to say, it failed to ignite. So I've gone ahead and popped the cover off here. This is certainly interesting. Looks like there's a, a pressure transducer on the gas line. I've never seen that done before. But that might throw a wrinkle into the diagnoses. But we should have a call for heat at the thermostat, so now I've turned the power back on. Our draft inducer should start just as soon as the board down in the bottom portion of the furnace initializes. We'll have our pre-purge to remove any gas or other unwanted materials from the burner area before the thing attempts a trial for ignition. We have our glow igniter over there. Our limit and rollout switches in this area. Those protect the furnace in case the fire comes funneling out of the uh, burner area. Boy, that looks kind of dirty in there. Honestly, that thing may need a good cleaning. I ain't really come equipped to do that. And over there is our flame sensing rod. Okay. It lit just like it was supposed to that time. So we'll try it again. We don't want to do this too much. Heating up the heat exchanger like that will be awful hard on it. But I could definitely believe as rusty as those those flame holes in there, and that's probably not what they're called. <laughs> um, as rusty as those look, I could believe that flame rod is absolutely filthy. So let's see if it fails this time. Hey, there's our glow igniter coming on. Sometimes the right terminology doesn't always come to mind when the camera's rolling. And of course you're under the pressure to say something. Okay, well that time, there again it worked. So I guess it's just not going to do it on camera for all of us. I'm going to go turn the thermostat off, let this thing cool itself down. And then we'll pop that flame rod out of there and just have a look at it. I don't know if we could really tell what kind of condition it's in. Just by looking at it. Not really. At least I can't see it through the camera's viewfinder. So here's the flame sensing rod in all of its glory. It's hard to tell against this white tabletop, but it definitely does appear that it could use a good cleaning. I've seen worse that still work, though. Well, we'll find out when we put it back together. The way this works, for those of you in the audience who don't have a heating and air conditioning background, basically the control board in the furnace puts out a tiny electrical signal. And when it passes through the flame, the flame actually conducts and rectifies to DC some of that signal. The furnace control board can actually sense that flow of current, and by doing so it knows that flame has been proven and the burner must be operating. If you don't get enough of a signal out of this, you'll typically have a furnace that'll try to start, it'll fire the burner for anywhere from one to several seconds, and then it'll simply shut down, trial for ignition a couple more times, most boards will do it for about three, and then they'll lock out either permanently or for a set period of time before they'll go ahead and try again. And unless yours happens to have a timed expiration, as many of them do, Usually the only way to get your furnace to try again is to either interrupt the call for heat at the thermostat or actually cut power to the furnace itself. Now I am certainly not against people doing things themselves. In fact, I suspect some of the people who are watching this, if they happen to have a furnace that's exhibiting these symptoms, they're probably thinking, hey, I can do that and save a bunch of money. I'm certainly all for that, but gas furnaces and other gas burning appliances are certainly not something to be trifled with. You can cause a hazardous condition that can result in you, your family, loved ones, friends, whoever they might be, co-workers if you're doing this at work. You can cause people to be hurt or killed, and then things really turn into trouble a bit later on. So 
do it yourself if you're comfortable and have the knowledge or feel that you can acquire the knowledge and truly understand everything that you need to know in the face of the hazards that are presented by gas-based appliances such as furnaces and stoves and things. But if you're not sure, don't, don't take a chance. The life you save could be your own, could be mine, could be somebody you really love. And whatever you may decide to do, as always, I'm not responsible. You are acting totally on your own desires, plans, thoughts, whims, whatever they might be, and I bear no responsibility for the results of your actions, whether good or bad. Okay, so here we are. Here's our lovely little dirty flame rod. Here's some emery cloth that I've got. I know you see some people on YouTube that are doing this with money, but my budget certainly doesn't run to that. And this is really the way that you should be doing it. Ew, look at that gunk coming off. Yeah, that'd probably be quite a bit of it. Some of that, of course, is the material coming off the paper itself. Right, but that rod is starting to look nice and clean now. But you can see how much better that rod looks now. It's actually shiny again if the light will catch it just right. So here in a moment, we'll put it back in the furnace. And I'm not too proud to admit that I dropped the screw that holds it in. It's behind the draft inducer somewhere. The key keeper's gone to get a search magnet because I didn't think to bring one with me. I'm not even sure I own one, to be honest. I didn't even bring a hot, i.e. magnetic screwdriver with me. So, we've got to rectify that little problem before we can put the flame rod back in. And I really do not want to have to take the draft inducer assembly out of that furnace. I should have known that's what, would have, what was going to happen. All right, folks, disaster's been averted. I did not have to pull this draft inducer assembly, which almost certainly would not have been a fun thing to do. I simply had to back out the retaining screws, pull it back just a little bit, and then the wayward screw from the flame sensing rod simply fell through the bottom. And although I had to send the key keeper off to, or rather he kindly volunteered to go and get a search magnet, once I had that, we were in business. So, let's see if we've improved anything if we've been fixing it long enough or if it needs some more fixing I don't know if I left the thermostat calling or not I don't think I did yeah, it was off. It's on. okay good deal yep there we go now, one of the things that my instructor taught me is that you don't want to be sitting right in front of these things if they're in an unknown condition when you arrive, or possibly even after you've been repairing them. Now, it is very humid down here, and I think there's also a high moisture content in LP gas. Somebody in the comments will undoubtedly tell me I'm full of garbage about that. But that might explain some of that rust, especially since this thing is being kept only at a very low temperature when no one's here, which is almost all of the time. So there's our glow igniter. There's our flames. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and let it run for a little while, cycle a few times on and off a thermostat control, just to make sure that it will in fact fire itself reliably and work the way that it should. Yes, I do think that spot that's kind of glowing orange in the background as the gas burner flames lick at it is worthy of some further attention. We'll clear that with the folks at the church, make them aware of it. And we'll just let it run for a couple cycles under control of the thermostat, and we'll just see if it's reliable. And while we're waiting on that, we'll just go ahead and scope out the filter situation here. At least they are running a filter, that helps. It's one of these nasty little cheap cardboardy ones. Well, that actually looks really, really good. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. All right, so here we have more great moments in heating and air conditioning system duct design. That's an outlet. Heat rises, and there's the return. Not a major short circuit of airflow, but a slight short circuit of airflow nevertheless. Do, 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 do. Manometer. <laughs> All 
Alright, so the whole time this furnace has been running, we have noticed a very mousy odor in the ductwork. Now, I looked at the filter just moments ago and it didn't appear to be eaten. I wish I could say the same for the insulation here in the furnace, because certainly looks like something's been mowing on that. But what I'm looking for, looking for any mouse droppings in here? I'm really surprised I don't see any. Because they do have mouse bait stations in the ductwork at various locations, I know that. But we're just looking to see if Mickey or Minnie or Jimmy or whoever was riding the Ferris wheel from hell in here. It looks like I'm going to give it a clean bill of health on that. Also checked the inlet pressure on the gas valve. We were at about 12 inches water column, which to my way of thinking is a little bit low, but certainly within tolerance. So I'm going to give this furnace a clean bill of health and we're just going to keep an eye on it. Then I'm going to go over here and do a quick check on this one, then we'll get out of here. As always, thank you for watching and certainly feel free to leave a constructive comment if you happen to have one.